hi welcome to my channel and today i have another theater vlog for you so today's vlog is our trip to go and see moulin rouge on the west end so moulin rouge is on at the piccadilly theater we went to see it in july for my 40th birthday we actually went on my 40th birthday and we went to the matinee show in on a wednesday yeah on a wednesday so yeah i hope you enjoy this little theatre vlog and we and i also review the show for you at the end as well so yeah i hope you enjoy the little video so we've just arrived at um, piccadilly train station there and yeah we're back quite early it's just coming up to 10 o'clock is it yeah about 10 to 10 um our train is until uh 10 35 so we've got a bit of time uh, it's going to go from gate 6 So yeah, we're going from gate 6 So I, we're just going to go and get some breakfast from Sainsbury's But we're going to get bacon balm And I don't think I need a drink because I've got a drink But I might get another drink actually And we'll get back to you in a bit Now we've got a nice cave of the seat. We've got a nice uh, charging thing on here. One here. Never seen one of them before. If I can uh, charge my phone up in there. It's good. So yeah, uh, it is what time is it on? 10.24 10 10.24 10 so it's due to leave in 10 minutes so it should take about 2 hours so we get there for around what, about half 12 yeah. Yeah, about half 12 and uh, you can't check into the hotel till 1 and our show is at half 2 so we should have enough time don't know if we'll have time to get lunch we'll see see how long it takes us to find the theatre it's, it's, it's at the Piccadilly theatre I don't know it's supposed to be a half an hour walk so we'll I was saying look at that on the way out so yeah, we're going to enjoy our train journey and we'll get back to you later. London vlogs last year you might recognize the hotel because we stayed at the same one last year we just thought it was really close to the train station so like on the Friday when we're coming back it'll be easy just to pick up our bags and uh, head to the train station so and it was one of the budget hotels so although it was still over hundred pounds a night but anyway it's just here next to this pub Yeah, so we are just walking to Piccadilly Theatre now, and we're Russell just walking Square, through. Yeah, I, I just get that we're just walking through Russell Square Garden to get there. We decided to walk because we'll tell how long it took on the tube That's and to be insane. honest it was going to take about the same amount of time as walking so we thought we'd just walk because it's a nice sunny day so yeah walking up I think it's going to take about another 20 minutes it said 32 minutes from the hotel so we've been walking for a little bit now so about another 20 minutes till we get there so we've just found the Shaftesbury Theatre 
where uh, Mrs. Tartlefowl is on. Last time we were here, we went to see Anne Juliet here. Uh, I'd love to see Mrs. Doubtfire again actually, we saw it in Manchester. Yeah, this was all boarded up, they were doing all this. Yeah, last time I came it was all boarded up, but uh, yeah. I'd like to see that again, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd It was really, that. really good. Yeah. But it's not what shells, was it? Huh? No. <laughs> okay, I like the uh, thing up there. It's good. Yeah, so we're not seeing it today, but maybe we'll come back another time and see it because we really enjoyed it in Manchester. Yeah. There we go, we found it. it. Took us a while, but we are here. Okay, so we're going to go and head to the queue. Now let's find the end. Okay, so we are in the theatre now. We are in the circle. So just up here. Lawrence is in the toilet. Just wait here for Lawrence, but yeah. I'll be heading up this way. So as I was saying, we are now in the Piccolo Theatre for Moulin Rouge. It starts at 2.30, it's 10 past 2 now. Just picked up a magnet and a programme. I think the magnet was 10 pounds. I'm not sure how much the programme was because Lawrence bought it. Yeah, really looking forward to show. We're in the circle. I think it's the Royal Circle. I think we paid about £50 for these tickets. Anyway, I'll show you our view and everything once we get in there. Upstairs in the circle bar, and we've got some more uh, milk here. I think it's always the same as downstairs, but there's no one selling it here. So, here is the price list. So, you've got the soundtrack, you've got some key rings, magnets, and pins, mug, notebooks, program, and then there's a few different tote bags as well. And then there's also a water bottle. So we're just about to head in. We're on row, we're row K1314. Okay, so we're on row K, seats 13 and 14, so we're here in the middle. I'm just gonna go take a picture first though.
my seat now, I'm on row K. We're on seat 13 and 14, so it's like a centre. So. K13 and 14. Right in the middle. Yeah, right in the middle. Thank you. Okay, so this is the view from our seats. We are in from K. I'm in seat 14. So it's like a central view, but you do have the top bit of the uh, of the stage cut off from the overhang from the uh, Grand Tier, but should still be a good view. I don't know how much is up there. Yeah. Got some pre-show going on. Yeah. So yeah, program, and we'll get back to you in the interval.
been a few weeks now since we went to see uh, Moulin Rouge in London so I thought I'd better give you a review before I forget what I've seen because my memory is terrible. So for my birthday this year we went to go and see Moulin Rouge at the Piccadilly Theatre in London. We went to a matinee on Wednesday the 26th of July. Um, so the show started at 2.30. We were sat in the dress circle um, on row K, seat 13 and 14. We paid £59 for our seat. If you know me and Lawrence, usually we don't pay more than £25, but obviously at West End, you're not going to get a decent seat for £25 unless you um, get on the day tickets or win a lottery. And obviously we planned this way in advance and we were going for the theatre, so we didn't want to risk not getting tickets, so we bought our tickets in advance. So we paid £59 for our tickets. However, we I did have some theatre tokens so I did actually use some theatre tokens to pay for my tickets um, I think it was when they did that um, £25 love theatre um, love theatre tokens that you could get for free uh, Lauren's got one I got one I think we paid for them paid for part with that so that came in handy for paying for those um, and the view from these seats were actually really really good it was a central view of the stage and I still felt quite close to the stage, you could see everything going on. So I definitely recommend them seats, I thought they were really good seats. And the ticket prices for Moulin Rouge are really expensive. It's a very expensive show. But now having seen the show, I know why it's so expensive. Um, but yeah, it, they are very expensive seats. So I thought for the view that we got for that price, I thought it was pretty good. So this show does have quite a lot of merch. I was very good. I only bought a magnet. This is the magnet. Yeah, and this was actually ten pounds. Quite an expensive magnet. Usually, I pay about you know between four and seven pounds. So this is probably the most expensive magnet that I've bought. Um, but it is quite a nice one. You can see, it's quite thick. It's not one of the thin ones. So yeah, that was ten pounds. But like I said, there was quite a lot of merch for this show. So I'll just tell you some stuff that you could get. You can get T-shirts. T-shirts, hoodies, baseball cap, tote bag, tea towels, coffee mug, shot glasses, keychain, a lapel pin, a set of pins, there was a necklace, I think there was a journal, a CD, this cast album CD, I think it was a Broadway album, I don't think they've done a London album, and a poster, and I think there's a couple of other things as well, so a lot of merch for this show. So if you don't know anything about Moulin Rouge the musical, it's actually based on the movie musical which came out I think in 2001. Uh, it was by Baz Luhrmann and this is the musical based on that. So that movie musical, what they do in, their, in that is they mash up lots of different songs and this is what the musical does, the stage musical does as well. It's lots of different songs which it mashes up. However, unlike the movie, this has got more modern songs. I say more modern songs. The songs that I really like, but they're probably more from the 90, 90s. There's some from the 90s, some from the noughties, and there is some more modern ones in there as well. Um, but I really like the song choices that they picked. I really enjoyed the songs. I know some people don't like the song choices in this, but I really enjoyed all the songs that they use. I think they actually use about 75 different songs obviously they're not sung the whole way through they're mashed together to make like new sort of songs um but there are 75 different songs um used in the show so it is a jukebox musical and some of the songs uh, that are in it are um are lady gaga's bad romance britney spears's toxic katy perry's firework and they're just a few like i said there's 75 different songs in the show so i had i think i had watched the movie once i don't remember enjoying it i don't think i liked it i'm not even sure if i ended up watching the whole way through um but the reason i really wanted to go and see this show is because i heard really good reviews about it um and i'd seen pictures of the stage and the staging and it looked amazing so i really wanted to see it plus i knew there's some really good songs in there that i enjoy so that was the reason why i wanted to go uh, not because i enjoyed the film 
because I was never a fan of the film. Like I said, I don't even think I managed to watch it all the way through. Um, so that wasn't the reason I wanted to go. Um, so because I didn't really remember much about the film, I had no idea what the story was about. Uh, so if like me, you're not sure what the story for Moulin Rouge is about, I'll just quickly um, give you a quick overview of the story. So Moulin Rouge is set in 1899 Belle Epoque, Paris. And it is a love story between Christian, who is a young American composer, and Satine, who is a star performer at the Moulin Rouge Club. Now, the Moulin Rouge Club is actually going bankrupt, and its owner, Harold Zidler, is willing to do whatever it takes to save the club. So, Zidler arranges for Satine to meet up with a duke, a wealthy duke, um, to, so that she can try and seduce him into loading money to save the club. But on her way to meet him, she bumps into Christian and mistakes him for the Duke. And then after talking to him, she falls for his charms. Um, eventually, Satine realises her mistake and meets with the real Duke um, and is able to vin convince him to put up the money to save the Moulin Rouge. However, his condition for doing so is that he wanted uh, Satine, so he wanted her to be his... Um, so obviously this puts a spanner in the works for her um, relationship with Christian. So they end up having an affair. Uh, but their relationship has a few other um, obstacles in its way other than just the Duke. There's also a Bohemian Revolution and also a terminal illness. So that is the basic story of Moulin Rouge. Um, and I have to say the story is probably the weakest part of this show i wasn't that impressed with the story it just felt a little lacking i don't know what it was um i just felt like i needed a bit more story to it maybe a bit more i don't know a bit more insight into the characters uh i'm not sh not sure i just felt the story was a bit lacking however everything else was absolutely amazing the production value for this show um is very high i mean from the minute you step foot into that auditorium you feel like you're in the moulin rouge nightclub it is absolutely amazing from the lighting as soon as you walk in it's all sort of red mood lighting um the stage and the whole auditorium is just dressed so luxuriously the ceiling is all draped with red velvet and chandeliers you have a giant windmill on your left hand side there's a giant elephant on the right hand side of the auditorium um as you walk in um, there's a there's a pre-show that goes on so you have uh, in the dress circle there's like little cages at either side and they have um performers um like hanging out at these cages uh, there's a sword swallowing going on 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 stage in the pre-show um yeah so that's that's just as you enter and then the opening number welcome to the moulin rouge is just amazing it's just like the first the first 10 minutes of this show you're just like wow um it was really really good and you really do feel like you are in the moulin rouge club they've done a really good job of um setting the atmosphere uh, for the show and you definitely feel like you are in the Moulin Rouge nightclub. So set for this show has been designed by Derek McLean. Like I said, he's done an absolute outstanding job. Uh, like the velvet from the ceiling, the chandeliers, big Moulin Rouge sign. Like there's lights all over the stage, lights everywhere. The set for when they're in Paris, walking across the rooftops, that's really good. And um, they've got like a fake like Eiffel Tower thing which they dance on and stuff uh, it's just really really good set lots of set pieces and um, like I said there's definitely been no expense spared the set is fantastic and what makes the set even more amazing is the amazing lighting design by Justin Townsend but that lighting combined with the set is just outstanding like I said really really good the lighting in this is really well done so the costumes for this show have been done by by Catherine Zubba they're really colorful sexy but also elegant as well and um and quite theatrical 
Um, I really enjoyed all the costumes. So the cast for this show was absolutely amazing. We did actually have four understudies on. We had an understudy for the Duke. Uh, we had Craig. We had Craig Ryder. Uh, we had an understudy for Santiago or Santiago. Santiago, I think it is. Uh, Teofik Falerin. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. And then for Arabia, we had Melissa Netterford. So those were the four understudies that we had on for the show. And they all performed brilliantly. They were all really good in their roles. So the standout performer for me has to be um, Jamie Moscato, who played Christian. He had an absolutely amazing voice. I think the highlights for me was his uh, version of Roxanne. Really enjoyed that. I thought he sang that amazingly. Yeah, I think that was definitely one of the highlights for me. And I thought Jamie was really good. He really brought charisma and charm to his character, a character of Christian. So I thought he was really good. Um, then we had Melissa James playing Satine. And I thought her chemistry with Jamie Moscato was really good. It really felt the chemistry between the two characters. She also had amazing vocals. I thought she had a really, really good voice and I enjoyed all the songs that she sang. So one of the things that I actually enjoy the most about this show is all the amazing dance numbers, especially when the whole ensemble are doing uh, group dance numbers. I just think that's really powerful. And I just I just loved all the big dance numbers in this show. And the choreographer for the show is Sonia Tahi, Tahi? I'm not sure how I pronounce her name. She's the choreographer and I think she's just done an amazing job. Um, I think the, all, the, all the dancers seem to incorporate many different dance styles and they were just fascinating to watch i just really really enjoyed all the dance numbers so here is probably a good time to show you the program so i don't know if i said how much this one but this was six pounds which i don't think is too bad for a program um on the west end however i don't think there's too much information here i don't know it does seem quite thick um but i think it is mostly just uh the cast biographies but we'll go through it and we'll have a look Okay, so this is the front of the programme, so you've got the Moulin Rouge logo on the front. It's an ATG theatre, so it's got ATG logo there. And it's got the name of the theatre here, so it's the Piccadilly Theatre. So as you open it up, you have an advert here for Mamma Mia, and then you've got some information on the Piccadilly Theatre. which tells you a bit about the theatre itself. Got an advert here for Sunset Boulevard. You've got this uh, skip the queue, get stuff delivered to your seat. Uh, you've got a few rehearsal images. And then you have your cast biographies. So, like I said, we have Melissa James as Satine. So she has played Louise in Gypsy at the Royal Exchange Theatre. She's been in One Love, the Bob Marley musical. She's been in Annie Get Your Gun at the Sheffield Crucible. She's been in A Midsummer Night's Dream and a few other shows there as well. So she's done quite a lot. She's also done some TV work as well. Then we had Jamie Moscato playing Christian. So he's been in Les Mis, the stage concert at the Sondheim Theatre. He's played Tony in West Side Story, JD in Heathers. He played Joe in Bend It Like Beckham. And yeah, he's been in quite a few shows. And he's also done some TV and film work as well. Then playing Harold Zidler was Matt Rixton. He has played Edna in Hairspray on the UK tour. He's been in The Producers, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, To Kill a Mockingbird. He's done a lot of theatre. And he's done a little bit of TV as well. Uh, playing Toulouse Lautrec is Ian Carley. He, he's been in the original West End cast of Moulin Rouge. He's been in Pippin, The Lion King, Porgy and Bess, We Will Rock You, Miss Saigon. Um, so a lot of good shows he's been in. 
then usually it is Ben Richards who plays the Duke. But like I said, we had the understudy on for our show. Uh, but he's been in things like The Bodyguard, um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and The Full Monty. So there's a few things that he's been in. Then usually playing Santiago is Ella Lo Toro. However, again, we had the understudy on at our performance, so we didn't have him. But he's be, he's been in the original cast of Moulin Rouge. He's been in The Lion King. There's just a few things that he's been in. And then I'm just going to quickly go through the rest. We had Amy Fortin as Nini. We had Tiago, I can't pronounce his second name, who played Baby Doll. Hannah J. Allen usually plays Arabia, but like I said, we had the understudy on at our performance. We have Rochelle Sharona as Arabia Maternity Cover. Elliot Williams Endure usually plays La Chocolate, but we had uh, the understudy on. Vanessa Ella Young is an alternate Satine. And then we've got all the ensemble members. I'm just going to quickly go through these. So as you can see, it's a really large cast with a massive ensemble. So we had uh, Melissa Nettleford playing Arabia at our performance. And these are the swings. swings and then here's your cast list the band your understudies list production team and then it says here Setting is 1899 inside the Moulin Rouge and in various parts of Paris. Performance lasts approximately 2 hours 45 minutes, including an interval of 20 minutes. The first performance of the, at this theatre took place on the 12th of November 2021. Then you have this little thing here, it says journey back into the hills of Montemata, where it all began. I've just got this little timeline of the Moulin Rouge, the meal, real Moulin Rouge. Then you've got your creative team here. Producers, co producers, some of the merch that's available. Production credit. Musical credits for all the songs that they use in the show. And these are the partners. You've got um, some this what's on in the West End, some shows that are currently running on the West End. Some information on the Ambassador Theatre Group. Uh, 
the booking and venue information and then an advert for Spitted Image the Musical. And then on the back you've got uh, information on the ATG theatre card. And that is the programme. So yeah, I really enjoyed Moulin Rouge the musical. Like I said, it's definitely a spectacle. It's probably the most stunning production I think I've seen, like visually stunning production I think I've seen on the West End. Um, I had a really fun, fun afternoon because obviously we had, saw it in the afternoon. And yeah, it was just a really fun show. I think the only thing really that lets it down is the story. Everything else is absolutely fantastic. The costumes, the set, the staging, the lighting, the dance numbers, all that's fantastic. And the cast are fantastic. It's just the story. Um, I don't know what it is that, that let, lets it down. I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit lacking. I just feel like I needed a little bit more story there. Um, but it's still very enjoyable um, and I really really enjoyed myself so for me this is definitely a four star show I think if it had a bit of a better story it would definitely be a five star show it's just the story for me that lets it down everything else is absolutely fantastic so yeah I really really enjoyed the show I'd love to see it again um, if I get a chance to I don't know if I will um, but I would love to see the show again. And yeah, so for me, that was a four star show. So I hope you've enjoyed this little vlog and review. So if you do enjoy theatre vlogs and review videos, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when the next video goes up. I do have quite a few videos going up. Um, I've got four more videos from shows that I've seen in the West End. So I've got one for Wicked, Tina Turner, Matilda and Book of Mormon as well so a uh, lot of theatre vlogs and reviews coming up so like I said if you enjoy those videos then do subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when all those videos go up so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this little video if you have please do give it a like don't forget to subscribe hope to see you again soon bye